your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, have you seen Bluff any place? What's that, darling? I said, have you seen Bluff any place? No, he's not underfoot here. I thought he was in the kitchen with you. For once, he isn't nosing around the icebox. I figured he was helping you shave. I've got his breakfast ready, but I can't find him. What are you feeding him? Soft-boiled eggs? Think I'd let him take eggs out of your mouth? <laughs> he's getting two pounds of steak. Steak? Mm-hmm. He's taking that out of my mouth. I'll take the eggs. Here, Bluff, Bluff, come on, breakfast is ready. Honestly, I don't see how a big dog like him can get lost in a little apartment like this. Here he comes. David, he's walking on three legs. Well, I'm walking on two. Any objections? Yes, he's got four. He's letting one go to waste. I don't think he looks well. Mm, how, how can you tell? Well, his eyes look feverish. You are imagining things. They do, especially the left one. And look, he's still walking on three legs. Mm. Might be that left front paw that he hurt in his accident last week. Yes, that's the one. But he was all right yesterday. It all healed up beautifully. Come over here, boy. Come on. Come on, let me see the paw. Come on now. This isn't going to hurt. Papa just wants to look. Uh, it's kind of warm. It's not warm. It's boiling. David, feel his nose. Hmm. Stop saying hmm and tell me. Hmm? David, you're impossible. Well, feel it yourself. It's boiling, too. It's all dry. David, I told you he was sick. Your instinct told you. My common sense tells me it's two different things. But it's the same dog. What do you think's the matter with him? I don't know. Something he ate. No, not something he ate. I go to the best butcher in the neighborhood. You think he has a cold? Looks to me as if his paw that's bothering him. See how he's licking it? He's trying to tell us something, David. Oh, it's awful not to be able to understand. Now, darling, there's nothing to get excited about. There is. There's everything to get excited about. Oh, David, let's not just stand here. Let's do something. Look, Claudia, dogs and cats and other animals aren't like people. They, they're quite accustomed by nature to take care of themselves. But they don't take care of themselves. They go off into the woods and die. David, do you think that Bloss thinks that under the bed is the woods? I don't think so, darling. And if so, he's out of the woods now. I think he may merely have gotten some kind of infection in his paw. Not around here. There's no infections around here. I keep the apartment spotless. You've taken him walking, haven't you? You know, I always thought dogs ought to wear shoes. How can they expect not to get infections running around on the street with their bare feet? David, what are we going to do? Well, I think we ought to heat up some boric acid solution and make a compress of it. Mm -hmm. That'll take the fire out, and maybe by tonight the infection will be all gone. Where does it go when it's gone? Darling, this is no time for scientific investigation. Well, what if it doesn't go away? What if he gets worse? Well, you call me up at the office, darling, and tell me how he's getting along, and then we'll decide what to do. Oh, David, I wish you could tell me how he feels. Bluffy, old boy, I'm going to take good care of you. You just wait and see now. Before you know it, you're going to be all well and running around on four legs again. Now, come on. You just lie there. Put your head down. Stop licking it. And just, you just be good. David, what's that funny expression on your face? All I can say is that I'm awfully thankful I'm not that dog. <laughs> Norton. Oh, say hello, Mrs. Norton. And uh, Miss Norton, it's Mrs. Norton on extension one. Hello, darling. How's everything? Yeah. He chewed the bandage off. Well, darling, I, I think we ought to take him to a hospital. Uh, but 
That's what hospitals are for. If you were sick, you would want to be in a hospital, wouldn't you? You wouldn't. No, you're different. No, I, I don't think Bluff is different, too. I'll tell you what you do, darling. You put Bluff in the car and pick me up here, downstairs. Right. And, darling, just one thing. Drive carefully. Remember, you don't like hospitals. Hmm. Oh, uh, Lottie. Lottie, come in here a minute. Say, Mr. Norton, your wife, she sounded worried. Oh, and now you're frowning. Yes, I know. Oh, I don't mean to be nosy, Mr. Norton, but sometimes it helps to talk. Yes, sometimes it does, Lottie. Somebody sick? I don't know. I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, it sure is awful when somebody you love is sick. My mother last year, in and out of bed all winter. Nothing really wrong with her, just sick. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I'm thinking of taking him to the hospital. Oh, the best thing. Good nurses and good doctors, other sick people to talk to. If I was sick, stick me in the hospital. <laughs> You're very reassuring, Lottie. Mm, what do you think is the matter? I mean, privately, just between you and me, what's your diagnosis of the situation? Uh, I think it's an infection. An infection? Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, they can be awfully dangerous. Get in your blood and run through your body like termites. And not that I mean to be a crepe hanger, but it's always best to be prepared. Oh, I don't think this is anything as serious as all that. Mm, you never can tell. But they shoot you so full of stuff these days, you can be half dead and still be alive. So, Mr. Norton, I wouldn't worry if I were you. Your wife. She's upset. She sounded it. Claudia takes these things very hard. Oh, me too. It's my disposition. You're either made with a sponge instead of a heart or a stone. Your wife and me, we're sponges. Say, Mr. Norton, you haven't told me. Who is it that's sick? <laughs> Didn't you know? It's my dog. Your dog? Oh, say, Mr. Norton, you sure are a card. <laughs> it even smells like a hospital. What did you expect it to smell like, a kennel? David, it's so quiet in here, it makes me want to whisper. It's so... just like a hospital. And you're so... just like a broken record. Come on, Bluff. There's the reception desk over there, darling. This is the most amazing place. I wouldn't mind being sick here myself. What can I do for you? Our dog seems to be sick. He was in here before, ten days ago. I brought him in. He was in an accident. He was in here two days. You wish to register your dog now as a patient? Well, if the doctor feels he ought to remain here for treatment, yes. May I have the name of the patient? Bluff. Uh, Bluff? It's a very nice name, Bluff. Breed. Very good. Claudia, she doesn't mean that. She means what kind of dog. Oh. Well, he's right there. She can see for herself. You'll have to excuse my wife. She's a bit upset. I am not. He's a great dame. Age? Ten months. He's only a baby. Darling, nobody is interested in your editorial comments. But if he's going to be a patient here again, I think they ought to know all about him. Nature of illness. Well, it's his paw. You stitched it up ten days ago, and I think the doctor must have dropped a stitch or something because he doesn't seem to be able to walk on it. Hush up. I think he's developed an infection. When did you first notice the symptoms? This morning, under the bed. Huh? Oh, uh... Past history of patient. No other illness. But, David, he was in here ten days ago. That's not illness, darling. It was an accident. He was sick. It's the same thing. Name of owners. Mr. and Mrs. David Norton. Address. But you have all this the last time I was here. I'll look up the records. Now, if you'll take the patient into the reception room, Dr. Mixell will be right with you. I had Dr. Hicks last time. Dr. Hicks was in the accident room. Oh. Dr. Mixell takes ambulatory cases. Well, he isn't very ambulatory. He's only ambulatory on three feet. Uh, now, come, darling. You too, Bluff. Come on, boy. Into the reception room. She'd be glad he's in the hospital. Most sick people are. Here's the reception room. Very nicely furnished, isn't it? They get the best dogs in New York City. They're certainly putting on the dog. <laughs> David, look at that painting. Oh, I think it's mean to have it fruit. should be a bone. A bone? I think that would be meaner. Oh, poor Bluff. Now, just relax, Bluff. Everything's going to be all right. 
Here, Bluffy, Bluffy. Why, David, he's licking my hand. Uh, here's the doctor now, Doctor. Well, well, uh, Mr. Norton, Mrs. Norton. Oh, Dr. Mixel. That's right. And isn't this the patient here? That's him. Well, fellow, what's the matter? It's his paw. The doctor can see that, darling. Well, he was asking Bluff, and Bluff can't talk, so I answered. Mm, feverish, inflamed. <clears throat> Looks like a rather serious infection. However, it seems to be localized. Is that good? Mr. Norton, I suggest you leave the patient here. We'll have to give him a blood count, various other analyses, and, of course, the necessary treatment. How long do you think he's going to have to be here? Darling, how would the doctor know? He's just seen Bluff for the first time. Is he very sick? He doesn't seem to be very sick. However, one must never be too hasty in a judgment. Do you wish the dog in semi-private, private, or ward? Private, of course. I don't think that's necessary, Doctor. I, I think the ward will do fine. David, don't you want the best for it? Well, Lottie said sick people like company. Sick dogs do, too. And unless, of course, Dr. Mixell, you think he needs absolutely quiet. Not at all. Not at all. I think he will get along just fine in the ward. We are very fortunate we have the bed space for him. All hospitals are so crowded these days. Yes, aren't they? When will we be able to see him, Doctor? Visiting hours are from 9 to 10 in the morning, 1 to 2 in the afternoon, and 6 to 8 in the evening. Well, we'll come in this evening. Can't I wait here? I'll be awfully quiet. And maybe you'll let me see him before then? I'm afraid that's not possible, Mrs. Norton. You see, the routine of the hospital must be observed. Yes, I, I understand. Well, <clears throat> come along, Bluff. Uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Goodbye, old Bluffy, old boy. Be good. Think of me. So long, old boy. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. We'll miss you. Come along now, Bluff. We'll go right up to the laboratory. Goodbye, Mrs. Norton and Mr. Norton. That's right, Bluff. Don't step on that sore paw. Oh, David, it's so sad. I know, darling, but... He's going to be all right. Oh, David, I hate to leave him here. It's just like leaving a relative. Well, we'll we'll come back this evening. Oh, David, don't you ever get sick and go to a hospital? Bluff and I just couldn't stand it. Oh, darling, you'll never let them lead you off like that, will you? <laughs> These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. What is it that makes some homes so inviting? Isn't it usually a feeling that you're never putting the hostess out? That she's glad to see you any old time? She doesn't go to any trouble, simply steps over to the refrigerator and brings out a tray of ice-cold Coca-Cola. But that simple gesture says, better than words can, how nice it is to see you. Pause and refresh yourself. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. Thank you.